Now this video is not going to be showing me sculpting or anything like that. I just thought I'd relate a story that, uh, you know, because I haven't told this story too often. I've told it a couple of times, written about it. I dreamt this morning before I woke up of somebody asking me why do I do Native American sculptures or Indian sculptures. And I laid there and I just uh, was half awake. And I started remembering back when I was a little kid. And uh, my grandma, Hildy, uh, and Grandpa Lemon took us, uh, or went with us up to the high Uintas. And it was an old dirt road going through a, a deep, thick forest up to uh, where she grew up. The, uh, I remember sitting in the back seat with my brothers and sisters, and I remember mom and dad in the front, and grandpa and grandma in the truck in front of us, and uh, an old truck. And the Chevy we were sitting in the back of was an old 50 Chevy, and we're just bouncing along, and then you know, picking on each other in the back seat and everything. And after a while, we came into a meadow. And I could see this cabin. It, it was still standing there. Uh, looked pretty good. The uh, roof was, uh, had sod on the top of it, as I remember. Uh, wooden slats and sod. I think it was wooden slats. Anyway, um, parts of the sod was gone off the roof, and uh, part of the roof was missing in places. And we pulled up and stopped, and I remember Grandma Hildy getting out of the, the uh, vehicle they drove up in, and uh, she always wore a flowery dress with an apron, <laughs> a bib-type apron in front of her, and she, her hair was always done up in a bun in the back gray hair and all. And she was a short little lady and she walked, you know, like an old person walked. My grandpa was over six feet tall and uh, big hands. When he spoke, you, you listened. And, uh, she takes my hand and we walk over to the cabin and uh, she walks into it and I'm touching the uh, the old logs with my hand and uh, sorry I gotta blow my nose. The first thing I remember is uh, walking in that dark cabin with little bits of light shining through the roof and through the cracks where the ch chinking or whatever they call it, the caulking between the logs had broken and dropped out. And so you could see between the logs in places. And I can remember the smell. It was a, a musty, rotting wood smell with you know, damp earth, rich damp earth smell. <laughs> And she walked over to this window uh, and looked out the window and uh, she asked me to come over. She wanted to show me something. And I stood there and I had to stand on my tiptoes to look out the window because it was high up. And uh, she said, see those trees over there, David? She said, when I was a little girl, I remember sitting here watching the uh, Ute Indians on their hunting parties walking through those trees, you know, dressed in colorful shirts and leather leggings and carrying their weapons, their guns, and 
whatever else. And, and she said, they'd all, every once in a while, they'd come up to our cabin and, and ask for food, and we'd always give them food, loaves of bread and, and whatever else, venison. And uh, that's where it started. Just a second. I guess that's where it started, my uh, love of doing Native Americans and mountain men in the West. That moment of standing there. Looking into that uh, forest of uh, quake and aspen and pine. Am I an authority on Western art and uh, in American customs and beliefs and stuff? No. No, I can only interpret. But that desire to interpret is buried deep within me. But I wanted to relate the story because, uh, you know, I'm going to be 69 in October of this year, and uh, I don't know how many years I got left. Excuse me just a second. So, answering that question that I was dreaming about this morning is what got me started on this today. And uh, so I thought I'd share that with you, my friends on Facebook and on YouTube. You're all like family. You follow my silly videos and you even buy some of my DVDs. I mean, go figure. I remember how at the beginning of my career of doing artwork, it always astounded me. Somebody would spend so much money for something I'd create with these hands. It still astounds me that I can make a living and put food on my table because of what I do with these hands. And, uh, and I thank God every day for that ability. So it is what it is. I just thought I'd share that with all of you. All right. I think I'll go do my dishes. <laughs>